11 was good. All right, it was good. This office, and again, I brag on you all the time because it's deserved. You earned it. Now, I want to tell you all some of your numbers. And I can tell you that across the board we had increases. Okay, increases. So, this is good for your listings. Uh, in our particular office, monies that came in to Keller Williams, I just want to show you the difference of what we kept and what we gave out, right? So, monies in to company dollar and to Keller Williams was a million seven hundred and eighty-two dollars. Money's out. Much more important to y'all. Okay, your gross commission incomes paid out in 2011 thirteen million seven hundred and sixteen dollars six hundred and forty-seven. Wow. Way to go. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. I think y'all are doing pretty good there. I wonder what that's like at most other offices. Right. Right. Okay, so GCI of almost 14 million. Written volume in this office only. <coughs> Guys, we outperformed last year, and y'all remember we outperformed 2009 by a landslide, right? Okay, well, this year we surpassed written volume by over 50,000. We were at over a half a billion. We we're at 583 million. 955,917. It's a lot of real estate, okay? Mm. Yes. So you might need me to repeat that? In case you want to add that onto your blog or Facebook or somewhere. Uh, written volume, 583,955,917. Closed volume. Closed volume in this office. Over a half a billion. Congratulations. 502 502,188,250. That is amazing. That is amazing. Uh, by the way, an average for closed volume per month was almost 42 million. Now, some offices don't do that in a year. Mm -hmm. That's our monthly average. Monthly average. Closed units, 2,653. 2,653 closed units. We increased that by four closings a month as an average. Way to go, right? That's awesome. So we were averaging 200, over 220 uh, closed units a month. Way to go. That's that's impressive. Uh, listings taken in volume. Four hundred and fifty-eight million six hundred fifty-four thousand eight thirteen. Four five eight six five four eight one three. All right. That was a little over forty thousand a month, and those were from the ones that were turned in. <laughs> Our closing ratios are higher than in case you might have noticed that. Okay? Um, listings taken in units were 1,812. So we had an average of those uh, turned in of over 150 a month. Guys, your vendor partners are writing this down because they're going, oh my gosh, I want more of their business. We're doing the majority of the business in Tarrant County. Okay? So, of all of those, of sellers, we had, of, of our listings, that was 1,389 reflected on the listing side and 1,594 on the buying side. So, we're seeing more buyer activity. See how that pendulum's changing just a little bit, which I think we all knew that. But it's just fun to see it in the numbers. Uh, by the way, profit share, we profit shared as a company uh, back to our agents more than $50,000 more than last year to our agents who decided to earn some free money. So uh, we profit shared uh, just shy of $180,000 this year. So I wonder how many companies would like to have just profited $180,000 this year, much less just give it to their agents, right? So. What do y'all think? Let's give this three. Yeah. That is impressive. That's
that's impressive. Now, here's the good news. We are going to blow this out of the water this year. Everything's lining up. We're getting so many contract questions. We're seeing multiple contracts, multiple offers, and they're working. It's awesome. This is our year. Now, let me show you as a company. This is in all Keller Williams offices, all Remax offices, all Ebbies, all Cobble Bankers, all Century 21s, all Prudentials, Virginia Cook, and Synergy. And so when you look at this, this is top real estate offices <coughs> in 2011 in the DFW Metroplex. Keller Williams, listing and selling ins combined by value. <coughs> I'm not sure what number that is, but it's ginormous. <laughs> Let me read this number out to you. Four. Ready? Four, comma, zero, seven, five, comma, one, twenty-two, comma, two, eleven. What is that? Four billion? Four billion. Four billion. I just wanted to make sure I went like, dude, four trillion. <laughs> Awesome. Remax uh, in the Metroplex, three billion. Ebby, two billion. Caldwell Banker, two billion. Century 21, despite that they're putting out all kinds of information, that they're number one in the Metroplex, 1.4 billion. Prudential, 508, uh, 508 million. Virginia Cook, 452 million. And Synergy, $57 million. I'd say we're dominating the market. Okay. We did, uh, just in our office, we would have been ranked number five out of all of the offices up to the top four. Yeah, because we're part of the number one, big part of the number one. Yes. But you'll know I'm competitive that way. I love it, but this is good information. This is so, there's so much hype out there, right? Okay, market share based on units as a percentage. Keller Williams in the entire Metroplex uh, had 14.34% market share. Remax had 12.32. Cobble Banker had 9.14. Century 21 had 7.6, Ebby had 7.2, let's call it 3, it's 7.29. Uh, Prudential had 1.7, and Virginia Cook had 1.2% market share, and Synergy had 0.13%. Congratulations, this is awesome. It keeps getting better. Now by units, this is by listing and selling ins combined Closed units. Keller Williams, uh, 19,589 closed <coughs> units. Remax, 16,828. Cobble Banker, 12,489. Century 21, 10,374. Ebby, 9,956. Prudential, 2322. So we outperformed that in this office. Uh, Virginia Cook, 1641, and Synergy, 180. All others, 63,000. Wow. Are you all feeling a little puffy chested? I mean, just a little. Um, if you're not, you should be, because this is a lot of agents doing a lot of hard work, but more importantly, we have a lot of agents taking care of a lot of people. And that's what's most important, is taking great care of our clients. So. If y'all want any of these graphs, uh, just give us a call. Call Beverly. We've got it, and um, we can run it any way you want to see it. I want to leave you with this thought. Any comments on those numbers? Yay. Yeah. By the way, those of you who've been on recon mission, just kidding. But those of you who've been recruiting, are you hearing those numbers? My guess is no. Okay. All right. Something to think about. Expectations. Yeah, Kim. Um, is there anywhere on in our um, website 
like when I was preparing for a listing presentation, I was looking for those types of graphs. Do we have those? Mm -hmm. like on our South Lake Rocks. Okay. Okay. Am I saying that right? KWSouthLakeRocks.com. Okay. 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 Now, if you want something specific for an area, you can uh, call Beverly. They're also on the vendor wall. Yeah, our office stats are on the vendor wall. Do you all know where those are? Okay. Mm -hmm. On those last two columns on the vendor wall are office stats, and they're year-to-date. Year-to-date. Just so that you all know, we, we ended year-to-date, and uh, we pounded everybody, okay, in Tarrant County. On the buyer side especially, it's just like us and everybody else. I mean, just huge difference. Uh, and then on the listing side, we were still number one, but it kind of went like this and then like that. So, but we have those in writing if you want to put those in your listing packet. Okay, so just a thought. If you say to someone, boy, I hope I can do such and such. Let's say if someone said you were drowning, do you hope they're going to get you out? No. Okay. Or, or you want someone that says, I will save you. Right? I expect to save you. Not, well, I'm going to try. Flap a little harder out there in those waves. <laughs> and I'm going to try to get out there. Right? That's not a commitment. So I want you all to kind of look at yourselves and say, what are you committed to this year? Because this is about you. This is your business. What do you expect to see in your business? Not in mine. I already know. I know what my expectations are. Okay? <coughs> we will be number one in this company this year, especially, in my opinion, <coughs> number one in productivity. We're so close. Right, right now we're in the top 14. <coughs> I think we're in the top 10. Okay? We get the year-end tallies. We're number two in the region in productivity behind an office that's twice our size. If everyone in this room did two more transactions, we're number one in the region. That's how close, right? So that's very doable. What does it look like? Y'all heard me say this. What does it look like when we're number one? What's the atmosphere in the office? <laughs> <laughs> What's the Swagger. atmosphere? Puffy. Swagger. Swagger. Puffy. Not cocky, but proud and confident. Swagger in that step? How are you doing this morning? <laughs> yeah. We're not downtrodden. We're not negative. We're not looking and listening to all the reason why no one is buying real estate. It's crazy out there right now. It is hopping if you choose to see it. And there are those who are choosing not to see it. Not as, what else does it look like? What does it feel like in this office at number one? You think it's happy? You think people are excited that they're making money or are they depressed because they got all this money in their pockets? <laughs> right? They're happy. Do you think they're helping more people? Do you think people feel better or worse when they're helping others? Better. It's positive. It's alive. You can't hardly wait to get into this office for the next opportunity. Right? That's what it means to be number one. Not to say you're number one. It's what number one creates, guys. So be thinking about your expectation. Expect to excel in whatever you do. This is from one of my devotionals, and I hope you all find me share it. It's from Joel Osteen. I am paraphrasing. Okay. Remember, low expectations trap you in mediocrity. Mediocre. I hate that word, don't you? Mediocre. It just, I picture mediocre, right? <laughs> Low expectations trap you in mediocrity. High expectations, on the other hand, motivate and propel you to move forward in life. You know, when you think about that, those high expectations, why do you think that propels us forward? Anybody? Maybe it thinks about what's ahead. What do you desire? What do you dream about? Instead of what are you dreading? the possible bad things that could happen. We stay focused on where we want to be, where we can go, how we're going to get there, right? What do we need to do? So I want to read that one more time. Low expectations trap you in mediocrity. Just, oh well, whatever, mediocre. 
high expectations motivate and propel you to move forward in life for your goals. Your goals can be whatever you want them to be, not mine. Your goals, okay? Be the best you can be. We move towards what we think about and visualize. Now, haven't we heard that like five million times? But it's true. It's true, right? We move toward what we think about and visualize. If we're thinking about being busy, if we're thinking about transactions happening, if we're thinking about when we call, people are going to be excited to hear from us. Even if they're not, who cares? I'm thinking they are, right? <laughs> they get to talk to me today, right? So would you visualize that instead of that meanness on the other end that I hope you never get. And if you get one, laugh about it and go, well, I'm going to start calling them every day just to cheer them up, okay? <laughs> okay, so we move towards what we think about visualizing. Your life will follow your expectations. Isn't that true? Are you expecting good things? Are you expecting a good response? Are you expecting those listings when you go out on them? Are you expecting to be living paycheck to paycheck or living in abundance? Raise your expectancy by raising your vision. Guys, now's the time to be thinking about our expectations, where we expect to go. All right, I expect great things because y'all are so talented, right? My expectations of this office are huge because I want it for all of us, right? I want this to be one of the best years yet. It's just, you feel it, 2012. Everything is lining up. So please have high expectations. If you're not sure what those look like, get with Sheila. Let her help you get your, your goals on paper. Wants aren't great enough. You've got to expect things, guys. And if you don't know what you want, you need to write them down as goals and expect to reach them. Right? Those expectancy. Expect it, not hope for it. Okay? I'm so proud. I am so excited. This is our year. Let's get out there and make it happen. Let me give you three. Mm, love it. Thank you. <laughs> What? Oh!